Hello, chat. How is everyone? Here we go. Yeah, how's everyone this morning? Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, we're doing good. Were you asking chat or us? Uh, I mean, that's kind of general, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're also doing well. <laughs> uh, yeah, episode three. Let's see. We've got my recap. Listening to fire alarms. Uh oh. Everything's oh, no. like a Cavody. Oh, right, it's they, they have like some sort of parade happening in their street. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. That is uh, a lot less concerning. <laughs> oh, it's a bit, a bit early for a Christmas parade. But then again, I suppose Mariah Carey is thawing out. Or long thawed <laughs> out, I suppose, by now. We need to appease her. <laughs> All right. It's, it's when when uh, Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé come out of their cave. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend who used to who said whenever I, we'd mentioned that michael buble is very much christmas music he, he would disagree so hard and come on <laughs> <laughs> all right well if everyone's ready we can go ahead and hop on in i am ready yep i'm ready last time you all see this individual sitting by the fire in a nice comfy rocking chair and in his lap he holds this very large tome ah welcome back but they were able to save that fella hope things look up for them but um that's uh Delve on in, shall we? Last time, the party awoke after their first sleep in Elmhorn Palace and found that they all dreamt of a dragon who told them to be on the lookout for Varaxis. While the group had breakfast, the mayor came in with a bugbear man named Arturo, who told the group of a young tiefling boy he saw being dragged away by a large creature on his way into the city. The group decided to investigate into the matter and followed the lead, given in hopes to bring him back to safety. On the way out of the city, the group met Arya, the young, young sister of the individual taken, and she told the group that her brother's name was Marion, and the party assured her that they'd find him. The group was also spoken to by a dragonborn gentleman named Reginald, who gave the group a ring left behind by Marion in case he ever went missing. The group followed the drag marks they found along the road and ventured into the forest, eventually happening upon a dagger that had been dropped along with some torn tree bark. Barney spoke to some of the local squirrels, finding out the direction Marion was taken in and after a bit more traveling, the group found the din and headed inside, preparing themselves for what they'd find within. Inside, the party found an acrid smelling purple liquid and noticed an eye watching them from the ceiling. Barney tossed some sand into the eye and Palm fired a crossbow bolt into the eye, causing the snatcher beast disguised they had to leap down. 
The entrance to the cavern sealed, and the creature disappeared. On that guard, the group ventured deeper, and they found a hobgoblin hiding in a crevice who spoke to them, and he mentioned that his name was Kelton. He was supposedly trying to escape after the creature captured him, and he agreed to help the party get Marion out, and the group ventured deeper, finding Marion restrained by a gooey substance on a cavern wall in the larger room. The Snatcher Beast revealed itself, and the party fought, managing to come out on top and take the creature down. The party then departed and got everyone to safety, back in Talakis, reuniting Marion with his younger sister. The group learned that Marion was taking care of himself and his sister since his mother left a while ago, and said she didn't know if she'd be back, and their father had passed away in the past from illness. Bob gave Marion some gold to help the two out, and Reginald, the dragonborn from earlier, agreed to take the two in and care for them himself. The group arrived back at the keep. Arturo mentioned that something awful had happened, and he seemed to be in a bit of a panic. The group was informed of everyone in the keep, including the mayor, being turned to stone by a shadowy creature that stated that it had come to reclaim its throne. Candle kept Yorick from seeing the scene and consoled him outside, and the party got into contact with Winston and had him come over after explaining what happened. Winston took Yorick to his house to wait there while the situation was being sorted out, and when he returned, he told the group that he might be they might be dealing with the spirit of one of the previous mayors. He said that if they needed to, as a last resort, he could reach out to Octavian, a very powerful sorcerer. And Winston told the group that they might be able to get help from the apothecary in Felgrim, and that they should possibly head there. The party also informed Winston of the dream they had, and Winston said that he might know more about the situation than he initially thought. The group headed down to the dining room, where Winston would try and shed some light on the situation. That's where we pick up. I can't wait to see what they get up to this time. And that is indeed where we pick up. Give me one moment. Let me switch this over. Here we are. Alrighty. So we pick back up with you all having just arrived back at the keep, and as a refresher, you found that everyone inside was petrified, turned to stone. New York's been taken to wait at Winston's house, uh, so he doesn't necessarily see what's happened yet and doesn't cause any panic. Yeah, you all make your way down to the, the dining room uh, and you get down there and get settled. As you do, Winston, uh, you see him kind of think to himself for a moment. And he uh, kind of looks at all of you. Um... So, before I go on, um, tell me more about this dream you had. Uh, shall I recite it again, or...? Uh, you, you, you um, can I just... You, you don't have that. You don't have that, actually. Uh, you could just... If you're explaining it to him, that's all good. Yeah, I think I think yeah, we'll um, I'll do that. Okay. And wherever and like, like I guess we, I think we we all sort of like we'd probably pitch in. So yeah, yeah, yeah we'll probably put it. I'll I put it together. Yeah. So you you all fill him in on what you know of the, the dream. He kind of thinks for a moment. Hmm. Araxis. That's a name I haven't heard in quite a while. What, what exactly is it? Araxis is a powerful, uh, very powerful and ancient dragon. 
And from what I, from what I know, he had deep ties to a subterranean city. Although I don't know too yeah. much about it. Subterranean. That, that must be the uh, the city that uh, Yorick must be referring to. Sounds likely. You have you heard anything about what this Veraxis looks like? From my understanding, he's a large kind of a deep blue dragon with red eyes. Perhaps. Perhaps missing a claw. Yeah. You, do you know anything about about that claw? When it went, there's any information tied to his losing that? From what I understand, he gave that claw up in order to save someone from dying, although her memory's a bit foggy on the whole thing. Do you have any uh, documentation, written histories, perhaps, that you could have a look at? Not on hand, but I'm sure... If there's none here in the library, I'm sure Octavian has something. And if the situation we're in it's looking more and more necessary to contact Octavian. Yes, it sounds like it. Mm. I think this uh, um, whole situation with the uh, where everyone petrified like seems a little bit beyond our scope. If I have to be completely honest. Yeah, it's, um, it'd be one thing if I could restore them with my, my capabilities, but this doesn't seem to be normal petrification. Mm, how can we help them? That's what I was hoping to do with the apothecary in Felgrim. She's, uh, more well first and more natural remedies, things that might be able to circumvent some of the magic that was probably used. The candles know anything about, uh, like, treatments for recovering from petrification? Uh, make me a... I'll take either a nature or a medicine check. Alright, that is going to be a that is going to be a nature check and ooh, that is a total of 21 nice oh. alright oh. so you would know with that that petr petrification can be treated uh, quite a few different ways one very common way it's treated is through a greater restoration spell but through natural remedies it usually involves uh, using venom or saliva from the creature that petrified the person needing to be treated. Like in the case of someone being petrified by a basilisk, they maybe use basilisk poison. All right, okay. Uh, question. Yes. If someone is in stone form and you say chisel them into a different shape this is not what i'm planning to do i am just asking <laughs> if you chisel them into a different shape and you turn them back will they will it be like surgery or will they just be grievously injured i don't think that's how it works so it, it seems like it would have been a fun shortcut to take it entirely um, depends. It depends on the type of petrification, I suppose. In most cases, uh, depending on how deep you were to carve, 
either the stone would chip away and it'd be it, it wouldn't have changed anything or you would be physically like messing with that person's like flesh <laughs> so when they turn back they would be wounded <laughs> they, they'd be wounded or oh, no. missing parts of their flesh <laughs> so uh no easy nose jobs then i suppose <laughs> It's never easy. <laughs> <laughs> True. Hmm. I don't think of the best course of action here. Um, Arturo, you said you were present when this all happened, yes? I, I, I'm, y yes. I, I, uh, I was there with the mayor, and, uh, well, uh, uh, the shadow thing kind of appeared and uh yeah i uh got out of there people uh turning the stone before they could even so much as react Yes, Robin. Actually, that raises a that, that's a good question. Were, were the was the clothing also petrified? Yes, the clothing was also petrified. Okay, so an, another kind of side note: if you chiseled off the clothing and, and then restored them, would they be naked? So if you that were yes, modify outfits, they would be they would be naked. Uh, it would essentially. If you chip the clothing, it'd be as though that fabric ripped, essentially. When it, it is unpetrified. Imagine the tailoring benefits. <laughs> you need to be very precise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm thinking the best course of action might be for you all to seek out that apothecary. And in the meantime, I can get in contact with Octavian, see if I can get him here. Yeah, sure uh, we can do that. We, we sure could uh, travel to the apothecary, yes? Yes. Uh, Fel Felgrim isn't too far from here. And um, as for Yorick, um, I, uh, I don't want him to worry. But I uh, value what you all think on this. Do you think he, he should um, have him wait at my house until we've sorted things out, or would you rather tell him now and take him with you? Well, Maybe we um, should. the uh, the mayor uh, kind of left him within our protection, so. Uh, I don't know if it would be safer to be uh, within, you know, the grounds of, of your house, or uh, if we should, you know, have him tag along with us. I'm not sure. I will say that he's he's there with Verdian, so my wolves there watching over him at the very least. Um. No offense to, to your him. protections, but I we have just seen that this town being in town isn't necessarily the safest option for him. That's also a fair point. Um, would it be better if we just asked him what he would desire? I mean, he that is, does make sense. Yes, he is yeah. an adult mm -hmm. now, so that is true. I just wanted to know if you wanted to uh, tell him about the uh, petrification and all that first. Or if you want to sort through it before. Well, unfortunately, it's something that he should know. I mean, it'll be, it wouldn't be the best thing to have him going all around to the apothecary and not really knowing why he's doing this. Yes, and if he's going to be adventuring with us, then it's time to start learning some harsh truths. It, it's not all fun and games out there. It's uh, essential that he knows this. Exactly. 
I also think he certainly expressed a desire to help people, and I think this is well within his, you know, meaning of that. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Just didn't want to uh, cause any harm to him, is all. Well. Yeah, you, I, I agree. I'll, um,. I'll go back to my house and bring him over now. And he gets on up uh, and heads on out. Uh, this is, uh, this is terrible. I, uh, if there's any way I can help, I'd be more than willing. I think for right now, maybe the best. Are you really good with keeping the peace around here? I I'd say so. Well, how good are you at fighting? Um, I'm not. A, I, I wouldn't say I'm much of a fighter, but I, I can hold my own if I need to. Why don't you throw a punch at me then? Uh, are you sure? Hey, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, oh, alright. Tom um, steps back. <laughs> She's just like edging away a little bit. Uh, I don't wanna hurt you. Yeah. I mean, if you do, then that means you're, uh, you're good to, uh, protect this place. Uh, well, uh, sorry to advance. And he'll <laughs> prepare himself and throw a punch. <laughs> uh, that's a 19. That doesn't hit. Or at least, if it does, it doesn't hurt. Big AC. Yeah, he throws a punch at you, and... You can tell that there is a lot of, a lot of, uh, control and effort, uh, with it. But you, yeah. you're yeah. stalwart against it. Hey, there you go, Mr. Arturo. You're, uh, you're definitely on your way to, uh, protect, well, keep the peace around here while we're gone. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I can certainly do that. It, it, my profession, uh, usually I don't have to do uh, any fighting, but I, I've had uh, two in the past. Mostly I mean, just uh, fighting off the rodents from my farm. Well, considering that, uh, if the guards are also part of the uh, petrified, I don't really think we have too much of an option here right now. Yeah, um, I'll stay here and keep watch, and uh, I'll update you if uh, anything happens. Uh, of course. Take this with you, uh, and he will hand over a sending stone. Anything uh, goes wrong, uh, I, I can contact you with that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's around this point that Winston gets back with Yorick. Uh, Brings him on down. York kind of looks. He looks like he's in a bit of shock, having seen what he's seen upstairs. Um. So, I've been told what happened. Um. You, you're doing all right there, Your Highness. It's 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 okay. It's a perfectly natural reaction. It's um. I'm, I'm a little concerned, but there's a way to fix it, so, um, as long as we can figure out how to help, I'll be alright. Sorry, just a mo just a moment.
All good. And yep, sorry. You good? Uh, I think um, we'll try to figure out how to so solve this problem. So, oh, don't you worry. Um, well, yeah, I, I'll um, I'll go with you all to Felgrim, and maybe we can find out something there. Yeah, we we are uh, um, pretty sure you you also express a desire to help people, and I think this this falls well within that uh, within that mission of yours. Not. Well, um, I'll I'll be here with Arturo, and I'm going to get in contact with Octavian, see if I can get him over here, or at least get his assistance. I speak to both of you. Thank you. And, uh... Travel safe. It's not far, but... I know the woods can be, uh... Dangerous sometimes. We, uh... The, the prince will be within our protection. Um, all right, I'm, I'm ready when you all are. Oh, let's oh go I'm ready. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. No time like the present. Uh, yeah, if they've traveled to you, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be here for you if you, you need us. Thank you. All right, you all head out. So, is there like a carriage or something we could take to get on this journey, or are we going to be traveling on foot? Or horses? Oh, um, I, I could get us some horses. You yeah, helpful? Yes, horses. I thought I don't mind, you know, a little exercise, but I know some of us got a lot of equipment. Um, as far as horses go, I can help with that. Uh, here, I'll meet you outside. He'll go with you all up. And outside, he... You see him kind of moving his staff about for a moment and appearing in front of you all are six spectral horses. Wow. These will be able wow. to get you to where you need to go. Thank you very much. This is fantastic. Thank you. Of course. Wow. Or you could say, of horse. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you all. Uh, each, there's a horse for each of you. Mom's definitely petting the horses. She likes to pet the noses. <laughs> Despite these being phantasmal, uh, similar to with Viridian, they feel like actual horses. Yay! Um. Right, I'm, I'm ready. If you all are. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. ready. Uh, I think we're all gonna have sore bums off to this because I haven't been in the saddle for a while. Well, at least I haven't. I don't know about the rest of you. But yeah, we're probably gonna be all achy tomorrow. Um, I haven't ridden a horse in a while. But... I think I was decent at it. It's all with, uh, it's all learning on the job, and you can say, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, have we gotten any kind of rest since our uh, fight with the um, the Snatcher Beast? Uh, you definitely had a short rest. So if you all would like to uh, spin hit die, uh, you are welcome to do so. Uh, I don't think I got hit. My HP is still full. Um, what would uh, what would my hit dice be? I actually didn't write that down. Uh, your hit die as a seeker is a D8, I believe. Let me double check. Eight, eight D8s. Um, yes, you have a D8 hit die. And since your third le since your third level you'd have three hit die. Uh well I'm I uh I'm at full HP now. Nice. Alright. You all do you all get on the road? Yes. Alrighty. So you all head out of the city and uh, let's see. Let me open actually the full map for you. here at the top. So where is the icon? There it is. Okay, so you all are up... Let me shrink that down. Yes, you all are up here in Talakas, and Felgrim is not too far. Ah. That looks yeah. doable. You all start on your way. Let's see here. There we go. So my question is, who is leading the way? Um, I think. Hmm. Maybe. Wonder if I should lead the way. I. I was going to say me, but I don't think I have the best survival. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's look at our stats, actually. Yeah, Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's why I, why I was thinking I could probably lead, because I've got proficiency in survival, and uh, I've got a, I've got a pretty decent book in, in nature as well. Yeah, mine's survival's plus three, and nature's plus one, so... Yeah, why don't you uh, go that... for it, big guy? Plus got plus five to both, but just not real handles is not really a leader. <laughs> I have high perception, so maybe I should be close to the front just to scout. Mm -hmm. I can be towards the back just so I can keep things safe. Alright. So is Barney taking the lead here? Yes. All right, go ahead and make me a survival check. Uh, that's not too good. That's uh, 12. All right. So you all follow the main road for a bit, and then you start to kind of branch off a bit, heading in the direction of Felgrim. And as you do, you start to head through the, the woods, the kind of, these kind of bare and tw twisting trees start to kind of lead you off path a, a, a bit. Uh, someone roll me a d20, just a flat d20 roll. Uh, 13. 20. <laughs> 
I got that twenty. Let's go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take the twenty. Let's see here. We a roll for how many enemies we encounter. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> See, I was just thinking that too. <laughs> so as you all are walking, you notice that up ahead there appears to be someone face down in the dirt. From what you can tell, uh, they seem to be perhaps a half-orc. And they don't appear to be moving. Is it kind of, uh, is there cover around them where people could be hiding? This could be an ambush. Uh, make me a perception check. Net one, baby! Oh dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh god. Can I help her? Sure, you can give health action. I'll... I mean, I have plus five, but it is a net one. If you're given the help action, you can go ahead and roll, roll again. Oh no, yeah. that's a two on the dice. Okay, oh, so total of seven. <laughs> oh no. Oh my goodness. Seven. Oh god. <clears throat> so, looking ahead, uh, there doesn't seem to be too many places for someone to hide, or at least not that you see. But from what you can tell, this person uh, is just lying there. They seem to be alone. Oh my goodness. Uh, guys, we shall help him. Y yes, uh, it's a, it's a fellow or uh, person. Got, definitely gotta like, help him out there. Um, it, like, yeah. He seems to be unconscious. You all... all right, I'll go and help. You all ride up. I think I'll uh, skirt around the outside of where this person is, just to sort of have a look in the tree line. Okay. Yeah, candles would probably do the same. As you do, you don't take notice of too much other than a bit of wildlife. And it's kind of hanging about. Nothing that seems threatening. Just your average squirrels and birds. But as you approach, uh, you can see that this this orc, uh, you can see now that uh, the mud beneath him is stained red. Oh no. Oh, uh, guys? I don't know. He fell on his spaghetti sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a chef. Uh, I've got to help him. Um, and uh, that uh, Barney will get off his horse and he'll, he'll rush over. All right, you you go over and roll him over. Yes. So you roll him over, and you can you can feel that he is alive because you do feel a, a pulse on him, but his eyes are wide open, and his heartbeat is very slow. There is a deep gash in his chest and he has his, he's kind of holding a hand his left hand over it and something else kind of alarming that you notice is that his eyes are changing color they're going through the spectrum of the rainbow okay well that's certainly uh unusual is that? Do uh, we we've... know any possible causes of uh, disco eyes? Make a, a. I'll take a history or a religion check. Or Arcana. Need those three. I'll. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll. In the meantime, I'll probably just want to sort of uh, see if I can, like, maybe give him a potion to help him out or something such. I do believe I have a like a healing potion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm that's just gonna be a nine for uh for an arcana chat. You've heard that 
you know, you, you would certainly know that this kind of thing typically has relation to wild magic. Okay. Here you go, friend. Um, like, have this. He'll sort of like try to like feed him the, the healing potion. Okay, so yeah, you feed him the, the healing potion. Uh, taking a closer look at the, this gentleman, uh, he's kind of average size. Uh, he has a small brown mustache. He's, his hair is kind of receding. This receding brown hair, kind of more on the curly side. Uh, he doesn't seem to have on nothing that really that's really striking. Just kind of this uh, this dirty stained tan tunic that is stained with his blood and the, the dirt on the ground. And his face is also kind of covered in, in that same dirt. But as you feed him this potion, uh, let me see something here. He begins to stir after a moment and you see him blink his eyes and very slowly lean forward. What what happened? You were right there, friend. Oh, we uh, who are you? I I was hoping you'd tell us what happened. We just found you lying here in the in in on the path, like face down in the mud. Um. Oh, that's what that taste is. Um. To be honest with you, I don't quite remember. Are you aware that your eyes are changing color a lot? Yeah, it's rather it's rather uh, disconcerting. Um, they're, they're, they're doing what? Oh, my eyes should be green. Well, well they're, they're green, green sometimes. A lot of other colors too. Do you remember encountering any spellcasters recently? Um, he kind of scratches his head. I don't think so. I was just making my way back from Felgrim. And, uh, I don't remember much else. Uh, what day is it? Uh, and, and to answer that question, it would be uh, Thursday. It is currently, uh, let me get you a precise date. Where to put it? Where to put it? Oh. Car. Oh, How much sorry. sorcery is this? <laughs> that's, being, that's being like given to us in Morse code. Oh my god! I. Oh my god! I can't believe this guy was hit by a car. What? What's a car? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is currently. Uh, let's see. I don't remember how to read my own dates. It would be the third day of second winter, and it is the year is 25 PC. I'll, I'll relay that information for him. Uh, okay, so I haven't been here for more than a day. What's your name, friend? When? I'm Nazir. Well, 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 mate, Nazir. Uh, I'm Barnacles. Um, we're on our way to Felgrim, actually. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, I wish I remembered more. I just know I was going to Felgrim because I wanted to check in on the uh, on a case that I had. Uh, someone at the Goldfang detective agency working on. Hang on, you uh, invest, uh, investigator of some sort? No, but I mean, I've had the help of one. 
Oh, right. Um, a yeah, very, very good fellow. No, by the name of Rex. All right. Well, that's sounds good. Um, if you like, you could, you know, travel with us to Felgrim. I'm pretty sure we're not too far off now. Let's uh, head back to Talakis, yeah. but uh, I think it might be safer to go with you. Oh, yeah, right. you can uh, travel a lot. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, are are we clo are we closer to Felgrim or to Lacus? Just spitballing. I would say that you are closer to Felgrim at this point. All right. Uh, um, sorry, just just a sec. Uh, do the um, does the wound on his chest look like it was made with a sharp thing or with a like a claw or something? Like a, I mean, a weapon as opposed to an animal. It's very strange. The wound on his chest seems to have been made by some kind of circular object. Oh, weird. I get this very circular gash. It's not very so jagged looking, at all. We're looking for a highway robber with a jaffle iron. <laughs> or with an apple corer. <laughs> I, I don't know how <laughs> I don't know if jaffles are an international thing I just know about them growing up people had jaffle irons it's like a round sandwich press that you put on the stove mm. oh, I'll, find a, I'll find a link <laughs> um, be wise if you don't to come with you all uh, if you don't mind, could Gunther do a divine sense on just around the area? Sure. Uh, just remind so me how. What's any... the radius of divine sense? Uh, sixty feet. That's not behind total cover. Okay. And um, I'll know whether a celestial fiend or undead. Celestial fiends or undead? Um, I would say as you open your your senses here. In search of any uh, other other planar creatures, uh, you don't sense the presence of any. That's good. Um. Well. Oh no. And you see him. He looks as though a realization's come over him, and he's patting down his pockets in search of something. Oh no. What is it? You, you lose something, friend. There's a ring. Uh, where, where it has to be nearby. And you see him uh, kneel down, and he's kind of looking around to the, through some of the, the fallen leaves and the dirt. Ah, uh, oh, this is bad. Can, uh, can I do a perception? Can that case? Come again. Does this ring something related to that case? Um, no, but it was very important. So, hopefully, just a normal robber. Normal enough. Should be easier to track down than some kind of hitman. I, uh, hope so. It's, uh, not something that just anyone should have on them. Is it a magical object? Yes. What does it do? It's uh, capable of... I don't know entirely the specifics, but it's uh, capable of changing someone's form. That does sound like it shouldn't be in the wrong hands. Can I do a perception check if I can, if I can see if I can spot anything uh, 
maybe something it just glints or it, like maybe it's, it's just dropped or whatever. Sure. Sixteen plus three, that's a nineteen. So you don't see anything that would seem like this ring, although you do notice that there is a set of tracks in the dirt that don't belong to Nazir. They they're a bit larger and they go off towards the east. And they seem that from what you can tell, these tracks seem to have gone up to where Nazir was laying and then went off towards the east. So they, they come in from the north and go towards the east. Yeah, well, um, you see that? Think think that might be the uh, the footprints of the culprit. Uh, you, you think so? Well, it seems to be uh, that whoever it was came in from the north, probably pillaged, probably thinking you were some sort of corpse and pillaged it and head off to the east. We can't go after them. Um, if you would help me get that back, that'd be wonderful. I, uh, I'll be in a lot of trouble if I had lost that ring. I suppose I, mean, I already it, kind of am. Oh. So do the footprints, are are they like boots? Yes, they appear to be boot prints of some kind. Yeah. Not how big are they? I'd say they're about Barney-sized footprints. Big, big boy footprints. If we're talking shoe size, I suppose a, a size <laughs> a size sixteen or so, perhaps. Jeez. <laughs> do they, and do they seem to be like running away or casually walking? Seems like they casually walked away. Cold blooded. Uh, would I be would I be able to tell, say with like maybe a nature or survival check, how fresh these tracks are? Yeah, I'll take either nature or survival. Okay. Natural twenty. Okay, uh, these tracks were very recent, as in they were made perhaps. Three hours ago. Yeah. Right. Uh, these tracks actually don't look that that old, so we probably have a good chance of uh, catching up with this this bloke, uh, yeah, whoever if, it was. If you'd help me get that ring back, I'd be grateful. We, it's it's a little out of our way, I suppose, but you know we we're here to help um, anyone in need. Well, uh, thank you. Hey, was it that you said that you left Pelgrim? Uh, yes, uh, we're coming in. What day was it? day that you left Pelgrim, uh, or Felgrim earlier? Yesterday. Okay, so probably when maybe you were attacked by a different person than the person who tried to loot your body. Uh, not sure what was with the attack. This does still hurt quite a bit. Um, yes, uh, I, um, I'll stick with you all. Uh, don't know how hairy this situation will be, but you have a means of defending yourself. Um, he reaches, reaches, uh, into his pocket and he pulls out a dagger. I've got this. 
It's not much. No, I suppose it's ample enough. Let's let's see where these where these tracks lead, shall we? Uh, right. Um, if you need, um, you can ride on my horse. I can make room. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will climb up with Yorick. All right. Oh, this ring. Does it allow you to change change your shape to another humanoid, or actually any shape? Well, um, the person who I was supposed to be taking it to uh, said that they could become a dragon with it. Hmm. Goodness. That's going to make things a bit difficult, I guess. And if you'd like, uh, any of you can make an Arcana check. Uh, I can do one. Maybe not. That's a natural one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be like a six total. I, uh, I got a 19 plus one, so uh, 20. I got a total of 17. Okay. The two of you would be aware that some of the most skilled casters are able to change their form in a way that's called true polymorphing. Uh, this sounds very similar to that. Do we know it's true? Like it's something that lasts even. Like, is that something that lasts even if you take the ring off? Uh, do you do you ask him? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't able to. Uh, I didn't want to mess around with it in case I did something wrong. Seems to be for the best. Wrong, like find the, change into find the ring. I'll then... go ahead. Find the ring. I'll put it on, and then just show up to Belgrim's this five dragons. <laughs> I was just wondering how you could do something wrong with the ring like that. Do you mean it change into something and then not be able to change back? Uh, or, yes, or change to something and, like, hurt myself and not be able to get help, or, you know, maybe I accidentally turn into, uh, like, a butterfly and I die. Yeah, there is the question of what happens to the ring when you when you change shape, if you're still wearing it or not. Yeah. I, uh, not too brushed up on magics and whatnot, so I didn't want to take any chances. I think it's best we find this bloke before that anything bad happens. Uh, yeah. Well then, let's get to it. All right, you all following the tracks? <laughs> Are they? They are leading away from here. They're not. I mean, can we see the heel and the toe? It's not like tracks coming to this person. So you know, they That's come a... to him from the north, and then they lead away, going to the east. Okay. Yeah, we're we're traveling east. Alrighty. So you follow these tracks for a bit, and then. There comes a point uh, about 15 minutes after you start to follow them where they stop. And you mm -hmm. don't seem to see them continue from here. Uh, they have led you up to a tree. 
Uh, this isn't a very big tree. It doesn't seem to stand out at all from the other trees here. Just another uh, tree barren of its leaves. Not too, not too tall. Um, knocks on the tree and says hello. If you knock on the tree, there's a metal clang. Interesting. That's peculiar. This does not feel like a tree. I wonder if they planted a tin can. Sorry, it's half past nine at night. My jokes aren't no, you're <laughs> very high quality. <laughs> um, I enjoy it. <laughs> so I suppose we should look for an entrance on this tree. Um, maybe some kind of mechanism. Hmm. Yeah. Should uh, we? Maybe should we it... do an investigation or something? Yeah, you can roll investigation. <laughs> Oh no, I got a three. I also got a three. I've now rolled a one, a two, and a three. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I, I guess I'll roll as well. Yeah, I got a total of 15. Mom's like repeatedly walking into the tree and going, Ow, oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a 15. Okay. So the two of you kind of, Barney, you and Candle feel around this tree and the two of you notice that some of the branches uh, that are sticking out from it seem to move when, when touched. As though they're on a swivel. Well, that's weird. So the knocking on it made a metallic sound but does it like the texture does it feel like bark it feels similar to bark but it's very cold in fact it's like it's almost as though it's trying to mimic it like from what you can so, tell i, 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 I try to say peel off that. some bark oh so you go to do it and it does not budge and i'd say with your investigation check um this just appears to be a, a metal tree more or less it, like it's it's like the other trees except this one's metal and some of the branches move uh, move kind of like levers well that's uh three mm -hmm. weird suppose we should probably turn or pull some of these see what happens um i don't think what it could hurt you pull some of the uh, levers yeah I'll, I'll i'll pull one of the levers see what happens all right so you pull one of them down and there is a very faint sound of rustling leaves nearby You pull any more of them? Wrong lever! <laughs> yeah, I think I'll try to pull another an, another one. And then there's an, an, there's more rustling leaves coming from that same place. Uh, this one's a bit louder. I wonder what's up with that. Should I, uh, can I go over to where the leaf rustling is and see what's going on there? Sure. Uh, do you try and move some of the leaves aside? Um, yeah, I guess uh, whatever area it was made in, I would sort of be poking and prodding and sniffing around and seeing what goes on. So the ground uh, underneath some of these leaves, you it stands out as a lot of the surrounding area is mostly just kind of dirt or mud in, in the various leaves that have fallen but when you clear these leaves off of this spot you find a solid piece of very smooth stone 
Interesting. Hey, there's a, a a very smooth piece of stone over here. Oh. What does it do? Maybe it rocks. This... Mm. Maybe it took over. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. <laughs> 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 Maybe. I'm telling you guys, oh, just marry good. someone who thinks you're funny. Sorry, what was that? Uh, it, yeah, it oh. might be some kind of hatch or door, maybe? How if we far away from it is the tree? Oh yeah, good question. How far from it is the tree? Yeah, uh, it's about 10 feet away. Tree. Okay. So, um, if we knock on it, is it hollow sounding? Sort of like there's something underneath? Yes. I suppose we should pull some more levers until we find the one combo that opens this door. Oh, I can Maybe we can leave. You pull some more levers? Uh, yeah, I think so. Alright, so... How many... Branch levers, do there seem to be? Uh, there seem to be four in total. Four. Oh. And so far, you've got two of them down and two of them up. Well, on only 24 combinations, then. Hmm. Well, I suppose we should start trying some different combinations. So... Are, are you putting the the last two down, or how are you going about it? Um, I suppose it makes sense to pull the last two down to see what happens. If that doesn't work, we'll know it's some kind of combo. Okay. Uh, as you pull the last two down, there is with the third one. There is more rustling leaves. Uh, this time, more distantly, and then with the fourth one, you see that that hatch opens up and now there is a open hole that goes down a good ways uh, and there's a ladder along the wall inside and it is big enough to fit like it's pretty large it's large enough that even barney you would be able to fit down it pretty comfortably you and gunther okay well that seems like an obvious point of entry Hmm. Is, the, is the stone on the path of the footprints that led here? Like, is it possible that the person may have, like, backtracked um, from the tree? Um, make me an investigation check. Right. Oh god, that is a three Um, for a total of six. <laughs> You don't notice any footprints or anything. Uh, once they get up to the tree, they seem to stop there. Although I would say that, uh, Palm, when you were moving aside the leaves, you would have noticed that the leaves in that spot seemed to be more piled up as though someone recovered it. Oh, interesting. Would I be able to, um, would I be able to notice anything with another, with another, uh, nature check? Or survival? I think survival, probably. Okay, are you looking for anything in particular? Just to see if they're, like, they're actually the, the same tracks that, if, if they are, if they would be leading up to that, uh, that stone hatch. Okay, yeah, go ahead and make me, uh, I'll take nature or survival. Uh, 16 plus 3, it's a 19. So, the footprints don't lead up to there, but you do sense a kind of faint, lingering, magical presence, as though maybe they teleported from the tree after opening it. And that's why the, the footprints don't go up to the actual hatch. I've received. 
It strikes me as kind of strange that this person would leave tracks for us to follow here and then disguise them on the way there. This could be a trap. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And uh, from the vague sense of magic that I've uh, picked up, seems to indicate that he, whoever this is, uh, teleported or something into this like hatch what would be the reasoning behind that my question too because it might be a double bluff make it seem like they approach the tree very obviously makes it harder to note that they might that they would have approached the hatch that's an interesting point Whoever this is, seems like they know what they're doing. Hmm. I just need to get this ring back. Uh, are the, the footprints definitely the same? Yes. And it could also be that the person uh, polymorphed for a little bit and then came back down and landed by the opening. Hmm. Uh, Maybe turned into an eagle or something? Um, that, that would make sense with the, uh, the ring. Well, I mean, either way, I think we're going to have to go into this hole, folks. I hate to say it, but we're going to have to go into the, the dark earth hole. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who is taking the lead? Uh, people you can see in the dark, probably. Is it dark in the hole? Uh, so aside from the light that's shining in from uh, above, uh, there doesn't seem to be any light down there. Oh, okay. And in terms of how deep it is, uh, you would be able to tell that it's at least 30 feet down. Does anyone have a light cantrip or an oil lamp or something? Um, uh, uh, you have me. True, you, That's you can, true. You can glow. Perhaps you should take the lead. I will uh, turn my scales bright then. All right. And are you taking the lead and climbing on down? Oh, uh, yeah. All righty. So you begin your, your descent down this ladder. And my question for you all is, are you proceeding stealthily or are you just kind of going in? I think definitely stealthily, even though I'm not yes. very good at it. <laughs> Since someone is probably in here. I mean, we we do have a dragonborn lamp that leading the way, so I don't know that stealth is really on the table. Good point. Um, yeah. Hmm. I What I can do is I can perhaps just take a branch and just use my druidcraft cantrip to light a torch. It's also an option. Whatever you all want to do. It's probably a little bit less subtle than a glowing companion, which don't get me wrong, I love, but it is not very subtle. No, that's fine because uh, <laughs> also my uh, stealth is not great since I have heavy armor. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I should go first with actually. You know what? If you want to be nitpicky about it, the torch should kind of go in the back because if you're looking at a torch, it blinds you and you can't see in the dark. Oh, it's better to have it behind you. I'll I'll give the torch to Robin since I I do have dark vision. So it's, uh, oh, that's true. Maybe then, Robin three, can bring up the rear with the torch. Vision, but... Okay, uh, that's uh, an option as yeah. well. 
if you all want to go stealthily and uh, have Robin carry the torch. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to carry the torch and stay in the back because I'm the only one that doesn't have any dark vision. Cool. Alrighty. All the NPCs do do Horks have dark vision? Uh, yes, he does have dark vision, and York has dark vision as well. Uh, all right. Well, I'll uh, follow you all's lead. Okay, we'll proceed into the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Right. watch your step. So you all proceed on down. And as you climb down this ladder, you're climbing for a, a good, what feels like almost five minutes. It's very long. Until finally you reach the bottom and you're standing in this small underground cavern. Uh, you can see that up ahead there are some torches kind of lighting a pathway. The, the ground down here seems to be that of that same stone that was above. Uh, and it seems to be damp uh, as though some rainwater may have leaked down. It's not very, it, it's not like water where you're like treading it but there's definitely like you're going through big puddles of water and you can see that that torch mm. light up ahead around the corner and seems to curve up into the right hmm i wonder who built this We might find out. Built by these thieves, they're certainly industrious. Well, this is true. It could be a highway, uh, you know, a robber's den of some kind. Maybe. Uh, well, I've I've got my my dagger. I hope I don't have to use it. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope we don't have to, that nothing has to come to blows. So, but still, I think I uh, should, uh, yeah, keep quite light on the foot and the feet, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Huh. All right, are you all pressing on? Yes. All right, so... Go ahead and make me some stealth checks. And I'm gonna roll for York and Nazir. Uh, 14 for Pom. Alright. 9 for Robin plus 2, 11. Gotcha. That is a, that is a 17. I got a 14 plus 2, 16. All right, and what do you think uh, of Oh, 12. Alrighty. So, you all make your way cautiously forward through this winding cavern, winds up to, to the right, and as you're making your way, uh, it's uh, it's getting a bit easier to see with the torches on the walls. But then as things kind of slope up, you enter a, another circular room where there is a path off to the left and one off to the right. Uh, and in this room, aside from that, there's just a big central column. But with what looks like runes carved into it uh does bonnie's language thing apply to reading as well uh i don't have a language thing like i can talk to animals and that's about oh, it it's, oh right i'm thinking of abbots. you're thinking of abbots <laughs> <laughs> um what i can do is an arcana check to see like to, if I can discern like any if there's anything like like malicious or magical about this 
All right. Is that what you'd like to do? Yeah, I I think I'll I'll do an arcana check on this uh, column. All right. Go ahead. 16 plus 5, 21. This appears to be... From what you can tell, this appears to be some kind of... rune written in Thieves' Cant. Uh, you're not sure necessarily what it says, but you do get the sense that this is some kind of abjuration magic. Hmm. Well, um, this does seem to be like a den for thieves. I cannot quite make this out, but something tells me it's thieves can't. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. We are following at the thing after all. Um, yeah, true. If only we had a rogue with us. Right, so... Which way do we do we go? Like, I have no leads. Um, if we stand by each entrance, is there any air movement in either of them? Um, so standing by uh, both entrances, uh, there seems to be a bit more coming from the left. Okay, well then my vote is left. Alright. You going left? Yeah. So proceeding down the, this left corridor, it goes on for a ways and you notice that you, you all are going deeper down. And as you do, the, the water is starting to get more and more prevalent. Uh, I'd say at this point, for it's still not enough to where you're swimming through it, but it is up to most of your ankles. Hmm, not enjoying this. And as you're walking, you all would take notice of something. You can hear faint whispering up ahead. Sounds... Actually, a, a question. Did any of you speak deep speech? Deep speech? No. Uh, I can speak orc and I can speak common. I speak a before. Okay. So, hearing uh, what's up ahead, you can't quite make out what's being said, but I would say that some of you would definitely recognize that this is some form of deep speech based on the enunciations. It's very guttural, very harsh sounding. And that sounds like it's coming from deeper within, uh, down the path you all are going. Uh, we don't have a party line yet, do we? No. Um... In his ear, right? Uh, yeah. How exactly were you getting this ring for? Um, so... This ring was for someone who's gonna give me a fortune for it. I don't, uh... I can't say I know them that well, but, um... They said that they needed it for, um... Well, I, I'm not entirely sure, but they, they needed to, to, to help someone with something. I, I, didn't, I don't quite remember all the details. I just remember that they uh -huh. were going to give me... They were going to give me a hundred platinum pieces for it. Where did you find it exactly? Well, um... I found it in my old house before I was going to move. And I went to uh, sell it, and I was directed to the person I was going to take it to. 
Hmm. Right, so we're taking a bit of a detour to get a ring back that you want to sell. Um, yes. It was for a good cause. Uh, I wanted to get a better place for me and my son to stay. Okay, well, I mean, if it belongs to you, then it's, you know, it's yours to solve. Uh, it just, it's a very strange situation. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, I, yeah. I get that now. Can I make an insight check on this guy? Sure. What are you trying to, trying to ascertain about him? Anything in particular? Just, I don't know, just like, um, if if the story is actually telling is true or not, or if if it's like, um, I don't know, I'm just, like I guess I'm just truth. trying to suss out the situation, like if this guy is actually, you know, like, uh, if if he's like part of like, you know, baiting us down here, it's, or like, it's, or like an ambush or something. Go ahead and roll that insight check. Nope. It's in that one. You're not quite sure, but based on what you've seen so far, he doesn't seem like he's 100% in a stable headspace. Oh yeah, are his are his eyes still doing the rainbow thing? Yes. Mm. That's concerning. Uh, healing potions wouldn't undo what that is, I don't think. It doesn't feel like it would. So Barney uh, uh, administered one to him to wake him up and it didn't seem to change anything. Oh, right, 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 of course. Yes. Yeah, I, I get, I get, kind of get the feel. I know it's a little metagamey, but I get the feeling that something more of a restoration spell would probably, like, solve. Does anyone have to spell magic? Nope. Nope. Well, um... Do your eyes feel strange? Does it feel like there's something strange in your head at the moment? I, uh... I've heard whispering every now and then. I didn't know if it was whispering just me. aside from the from the uh, stuff we're hearing now. I've heard it since I woke up. I can't understand it though. You know what language it sounds like? It just sounds like gibberish. This is highly concerning. Can you try to um, repeat it. Hmm. Yeah. I don't even know how I would. It's just very faint whispers. Uh, sounds really throaty. This is all very, very concerning. Um, hmm. I don't. <laughs> man, being low level is so difficult after, like, this morning's campaign was level 18. <laughs> So you just don't have as many resources available to you? It's fun. It is fun. It is. It really is fun to start low again. Alright, what do you all do? Alright, um... Maybe see what's in that. Maybe we should go back and see what's in that right path before we go into this, uh... That's not a bad idea, actually. Physical place. I want to yeah. ask my pager if they understand or at least know the what language is on these screens. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Give me a moment. So you're asking what language uh, the whispering is? Yeah, if it did sound familiar. Mm, 
sounds like perhaps a deep speech. Yeah, I I think I have heard deep language before. Sounds otherworldly. Should we investigate or should we go back? I would go back. Uh, we can always come back this way, I hope. Oh, were you asking your patron? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was asking my patron. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Big news, I am now your patron. <laughs> None of us realize that Robin is a warlock with a patron. We just answer their questions. They're yeah. <laughs> yeah, she just tells you you should be cautious. Uh, guys, I kind of want to continue. Well, you mean continue onwards to that whispering or? Or we can take the other tunnel. No, no, continue to the whispering. Well, either way, I'm not keen on splitting up, so I will do whatever the majority decides to do. Well, I'm not. Sh I don't know how this is gonna. How we're gonna end up like. Yeah, it's uh, it's just I'm sensing a lot of danger here, but I'm also curious. So I say we should press on. All right, where are you all going? I'm happy to press on if the rest want to. What was that, Robin? Oh no, I was going to say, let's continue. Okay. Ahead. And Saffron? Uh, I was just, uh, if it seems like we're all good to continue on, then I guess we're gonna find out who's making all these whispers. All right, let's do it. All right. So you continue to tread the water, and you can see that there's kind of a ledge raised above you and some stairs that lead up to it. Uh, and off towards the far left side of the room, up these stairs, you can see that there is a very vibrant kind of cerulean blue light. It's kind of shining in a column. And I would also say that you can definitely tell that the whispering seems to be coming from that direction as well. Do you what? recognize what the thing is, Barnacles? Well, um, I can, uh, I don't know, maybe take a peek. Uh, what sort of check would I roll there? So are you trying to see what the column is? The column of light? Yes. Um, I'll take Arcana. Yeah, I'd say an Arcana check. That is a 14. This, from what you can tell, this is definitely... It is, the light is certainly magical in nature, although you're not entirely able to see what's causing it from where you from where you all are. Although I would say that you definitely notice that this magic seems to be of a more divination inclined sort. Right. 
divination magic. That's kind of your area of expertise, Gontha. Uh, yes, uh, I guess I could, uh, and, and tune into this, uh, could I look into this or investigate or inside it? Sure. Uh, I will say that, so essentially from where you all are here at the bottom of the stairs, uh, you, to get a lot more, you, you guys would have to get a bit closer. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'll get closer uh, too. Yeah, I think I we're. I think I'm happy to do that as well. Can we hear from the whispering uh, about how many people there are, or is it too difficult to say with whispers? The whispers seem to kind of echo, but it seems like it's coming from two individuals. Okay. Well, let's move closer then, I suppose. All right. So you begin to climb these stairs out of the water and going up and looking off to the, the left, you can see that column of light. Uh, you can very clearly see now that uh, there are two people that are robed standing in front of this, this column and they seem to be whispering with their arms outstretched. And there is a... I guess uh, the best way to describe it is a sigil of sorts that has been carved into the stone in the ground. And that's where this light seems to be emanating from, th this sigil that's been made. Uh, are we close enough that talking is a bad idea? Um... You could whisper and probably get away with it, but anything louder than that, it would probably bring some attention to you. Okay. Would, so this is about to become an ASMR channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would I be able to discern what the sigil is with a, with a check of sorts? Like an, maybe, maybe like Arcana or something? I'm going to say... Make a religion check. Religion, okay. I got a 15. Okay. This sigil seems to be connected with god of protection who well, you would you all would know as Heslan I, I I don't know what these two are up to but uh, it seems like they're trying to protect something or someone uh, that sigil over there is uh, is from the god of protection it's a it's a Heslin symbol. And you would also uh, know that Heslin is essentially the leader of the gods, leader of the Aurelian pantheon as well. Much as Helm was before Helm was killed. Okay. So, not sure what we're going to be doing here. Um, they uh, they don't seem to be able. They don't seem to be uh, like a malicious sort, despite the robes. So, we're still trying to look for this ring, right? That's uh, right. Yes. And we're positive that the tracks led here. They didn't just trail off to this part, this part here, and then kind of go further afterwards, right? Actually, uh, something that you probably would have taken notice of is uh, coming out of the water and uh, leading up the stairs. 
You would recognize the shape of the footprint, uh, those same boot tracks, uh, this time in water. Okay. Hmm. It was one of the rogue dudes just got huge, just got huge feet. Uh, one of them it looks to be very much on the larger side. Mm. Well, I'm not particularly dedicated to Heslan, but from my understanding of his works, perhaps it's a good thing that this sale didn't go through. What's that? Any, any reason? Oh, we don't know the purchaser. It seems that his identity is not known to... Nazir, yes? It, it is. Oh. Well. Maybe, maybe we can ask. Sorry. Sorry, our dog hears a cat <laughs> outside. Um, sorry, I was, I was uh, about to say. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think what what I was about to say was just to, uh, like maybe. Say so like, well, maybe we should introduce ourselves, or I don't know. What do you think? What does everyone else think? I think it's all right to introduce ourselves. I mean, we're not, we're not, we don't have the intent of harming them or anything. I don't think introducing ourselves will be a good idea because we aren't being through those right now. We, sh we should be okay, uh, I hope. And if we need to make an escape, we could... We know how much way we came in. Sorry about uh, the barking in this neighborhood when your dog barks, you have to go check. Ah, no, you're good. Well, uh, only problem with that, uh, your highness, is that, uh, they also know this way too, so. True. Um, we 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 outnumber them at least. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Sorry, my uh, my audio was funny for a second there. I didn't hear any talking. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, um... Right. You, you, well, didn't, you didn't miss anything. Uh, York just said that at least we outnumber them. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe we should go say hello. Yeah. Let's do it. Alright. You approach. Yes. Apples is gonna try to stay hidden just in case this becomes moment all right so you you begin you all begin to approach and when you get up close enough uh they stop with a whispering and that blue glow of the sigil ceases to function and the, the two of them turn and look at you uh and they take off they take off their hoods uh one of them appears to be a a bit on the larger side, uh, a bugbear gentleman. Uh, you can definitely see that his boots would match what you all found. And the other seems to be a, a, a Ladrin woman. Um, who are you? And why are you here? Uh, hi, um, sorry to intrude, but, uh, we, we, um, we tracked you down here because, uh, you know, there's a, a fellow here who lost his ring and, um, 
he said it seemed fairly important. We just want to like to know if you don't know anything about that. I'm, I'm steps up uh, and kind of looks at looks at you all, uh, and then his eyes stop on Nazir. Oh, um, well, that would be your ring then. Um, my apologies. I thought you were um dead. Uh, it, it, you best explain, uh, Cheshire. Um, fine. Well, before I do, um, you're he you're just here for the ring, yes? You aren't here to cause trouble. No trouble what's no trouble whatsoever. No, we've actually got a part uh, appointment with uh, with someone else. Um, yeah. Very we were just well. helping this gentleman. Yeah, just helping a fellow citizen of the kingdom, I suppose. Well, uh, to put things simply, this ring shouldn't be in his hands, nor should be in many. Um, we took our chance to uh, procure it after overhearing that a certain someone would be using it. A certain someone in Talakas. So we uh, went after it. Do you know who it was in Talakas? They, um... Unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't have a name that is publicly known. But I do know that they're a part of an order of God Slayers. That doesn't sound very good. No, not at all. I was hoping to get a, a blessing from Heslan himself. To infuse into this ring and to then give to our um, leader. So that perhaps we could combat them. Right. Okay. Well, you said you you found this gentleman in the in in the woods, just like that. Yeah, you wouldn't probably perhaps know of you know how he came by with this strange wound or like the magical effect that seems to be affecting his eyes. Well, first let me ask this to you. Um, you, and she looks in his ear. Oh, give me one sec. Dog is barking. All good. But, uh, she looks at Nazir. Now, did you meet with this person? At all? Uh, yes. They, uh, were odd. They wore a mask. Right, and you don't remember anything strange happening during that meeting? Perhaps after you left, or when you were getting, getting ready to depart? Um, I don't think so. Hmm. Now, if you like to know what I think, I think that it's very possible that uh, they performed a bit of magic on you as you were leaving to ensure that they could get what they wanted off of you. Just my thought. That wound on you looks magically created. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not something I recognize at all, so, yeah. That, that theory does seem to hold some water. And you say your memory is foggy on a lot of this, yes? Uh, yes. It's very possible that they also modified your memory. If they're... If this person you met with is the person I'm thinking of, they are definitely capable of it. 
uh, enjoy using you to get something they shouldn't have their hands on. Well, that sounds dreadful. And you're sure? Very sure. This person aims to aid in the downfall of the gods. And it's probably part of the reason why Helm is dead. If they had been in the Order five years ago. I, I remember the day the, the sky cracked open. Exactly. It wasn't pretty. I can return the ring to you, but I would suggest leaving it with us. It put you at ease, I can tell you precisely what we were planning on doing with it. I think by all means, uh, it yeah. enlighten us, all of us. We'd love to know. We wanted to use the ring in order to enhance the abilities of our leader so that he could lead the charge on us going after this order and perhaps taking them down. He's already a pretty strong fellow. So having a, the means of a stronger, even stronger body would not be out of the question. But you are alive, and it is your ring, I suppose. Oh. Yeah, uh, Nazir, I believe the choice lies, uh, lies with you, since, you know, you found it in your house. Um, but if, if I were to, you know, just lay down my two cents, um, I'd probably think not probably think selling a ring to you know an order of god slayers is probably not such a great thing especially after they've just decided to use you to get what they want you might have you know perhaps if we didn't find you in time uh, you probably would have you know been empty-handed left empty-handed and not even you know get paid can I um, inside check this whole situation, or is that too broad? Ah, uh, I'd say it's a bit broad, but um, what are maybe, you trying to get a read on specifically? I want to see if either of these two parties are not lying exactly I'm necessarily, but yeah, yeah, something, something sort of lying by omission, if that makes sense. Yeah, like not being entirely honest. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Folks, it's another net one. Oh, holy no. shit. <laughs> I used up all my good rolls earlier today for a very bad <laughs> arena battle. Oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. No. Uh, oh, New dice time. The dice is all tuckered out. I have been using different ones each time. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> so, were you using these ones earlier, though? Because yes, they all <laughs> they're tired. out of juice. I need to recharge them. Send them all to jail. <laughs> so since this situation um, is so bizarre, it's kind of hard to get a read. But I would say that based on the confidence is being displayed from uh, this Latin woman here, she seems like she's not really leaving anything out. She seems like she's been very straightforward from what you can tell. And does Nazir look kind of nervous, maybe? He looks mostly confused. Because of the spell, I suppose, or the whatever is wrong with his uh, eyes. Hmm. Um, excuse me, uh... Yes? Mr. Uh... So, 
since you were aware of this whole sale, were you expecting to find Nazir not dead? Yes, originally I was going to try and see if we could procure it off of him ourselves. Maybe buy it at a higher price, perhaps. But when a friend here found you, you were uh, uh, face down in the mud. Oh, Mr. Bugbear, did you find... It, when you found him, did you see anything unusual about the whole scene? Uh, well, uh, so when I found this gentleman, uh, he had a gash in his chest, th that same one, and his eyes were... Oh, they're still all weird. Um, yeah, he looked very similar. The, the only find thing that I kind of find like a bit strange is um, that you just kind of left him there. What was that all about? Um, well, that may have been a bit rude on my part. I do apologize for that. Um, I was more focused on getting the ring away from the god slayers at that point, so seeing that I did need to make the deal, and I assumed that he was dead, I just took the ring and made my way back. Kind of callous, don't you think? Well, I didn't want to draw any more unnecessary attention to myself. Again, sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. Just figured, you know, with the cash and the Crazy eyes, I figured you were beyond my help that I could offer. So his eyes were open and looking at you, but you didn't want to help him? Well, he wasn't moving. He's unresponsive. I didn't feel a pulse, pulse on him. Hmm. We managed to somehow... Um... Can you do anything about the eye situation? Um, I've never seen anything like this. I honestly have no idea what's going on with your eyes. But, uh, boss might. I could go get him. Uh, hmm. Perhaps we um, should wait for your that? bosses. Go ahead. I'm sure your boss is... Sounds like they've seen some things in their time. Uh, yes, I'll go get him. I'll be just a moment. And he goes back, uh, down the stairs, uh, and back towards the, the room you got, you all came from, uh, with the right path as well in it. And he comes back, uh, a moment later. Let me grab his art. Mm -hmm. Important NPC time. Comes back with this gentleman. You will see a very large Leonin man. Uh, this is greetings. He. Well, hello there. And who uh, might you all be? Uh, I think we'll just introduce ourselves and explain the situation. Okay. I'm good. Well, I'm Flynn. Flynn Vomidon. And I apologize for you getting wrapped up into this, but uh, what, what is it that you desire of me? Well, we have this companion, temporary companion, but still companion, who has uh, rainbow eyes, that we're not sure what's uh, going on there, and a wound of magical origin on his chest. Um, you may recognize him as the person whose ring you've... Uh, your acolytes have absconded with. 
Right. Let me see. And he will take a closer look at Nazir. Oh. Interesting. You have what's called the Eye of Madness. Usually it's just one eye, but you happen to have it in both, and that's very unstable. That means you have a uh, wild magic residing within you, waiting to be let loose. Well, it doesn't sound too good, doesn't it? Sounds kind of lethal to me. It's not always a bad thing, if you can learn to control it anyway. Um, but uh, considering you didn't know what it was, I'd assume that's not the case with you. Uh, uh yeah, I know. I, I don't know anything about this. Well, um, very unfortunately, I don't know of a cure for it. Most people just kind of deal with it. It's just kind of part of them. You mean for like the rest, you mean for the rest of his life? Well, I mean, unless you can find a way to get new eyes, I suppose. Isn't there so a way to- his eyes, is, is that something that was done to him, or something that might have just been awakened in him? Either are possible. Although I don't know if anyone's capable of giving it to someone, other than perhaps Ardanus before he was killed all those years ago. Could this be a fey touch? Hmm, perhaps. It's not out of the question. And do, do you reckon this was caused by the uh, magical wound that's in his chest? Mm, that's a catapult spell. That's a ball bearing was used. So they really wanted him dead, huh? Looks like it. Listen, I don't know if you should be selling a ring to someone who was willing to murder you for it. Yeah. Well, look, so what were they going wow. to offer you for this ring? Um, it's going to get a lot of platinum. I could offer you as much platinum as you need if you allow us to keep it. I'm willing to part with a bit. Especially if it's to keep it out of the hands of the God Slayers. This does sound like the better option to me, but, you know, uh, I'm just an external party here. The choice is ultimately yours. Um, yeah, it to be honest, though, it. Like a better idea. What was that? To be honest, uh, it definitely. Kind of... Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. It does sound like the person you were selling, you were going to sell this to, is a bad guy. But I'm not so sure if they're the ones that attacked you, since you did still have the ring on when Miss Bugbear found you. That's a good point. Hmm, that is a good point. But maybe there's more than one party involved here. Quite possibly. Or more than, or more than two, at least. Claude, when you found him, what, um... You didn't notice anyone else, did you? Uh, no, I, I didn't. He was alone and face down in the mud, gash in his chest, crazy eyes. That's what I remember. Right. Hmm. And when you all found them, did, did you notice anything different? Or was it about the same? 
Well, I'm not entirely sure how long uh, he's been lying there, but I, we didn't seem to, I mean, besides like us helping him, um, I certainly didn't seem to see anyone else uh, like or notice anything else like uh, in the area. Not sure if we were being followed either, so you might want to, uh, you know, see like see about that. Um, is it possible that more than one party was off to the ring? The one party is responsible for the injury. And perhaps the two parties ran into each other and began fighting among souls, leaving the ring for you to collect. Hmm. I don't know. It's a possibility. Hmm. It's... If it wasn't long ago, I could perform a bit of... Uh, in, I could investigate into it. I, I think we're probably, but would probably also be beneficial to Mister Nazir here, uh, if he'd be, you know, if he'd agree to it. Um, perhaps you could stay like a little while under your protection here, since you know, people seem to get the general impression that the ring is still on him, and that his life might be in danger. Uh, that would be great, but I, I, I do need to get my son from Talakis. I wouldn't want anything to happen to him while I'm away. We can, That's um, it. we can do that. We can arrange that. In fact, I do have contact with uh, someone in Talakis oh. named Arturo. That might also be a good bet. Um, I could uh, escort you to get your son and bring you back here. That's also an option. You know, just until the dust settles. Um, yeah, that sounds like a better idea. I didn't know that having this ring would get me wrapped up into all this, but, uh, if it's for the safety of me and my son, then uh, yes, I think that's a good idea. And if you do let us keep the ring, then um, I'll see to you and your son getting the fortune you are chasing. See, it'll work out for you, man. Uh, yeah, um, thank you. Thank you all for the help. You know, we uh, we do what we can. Um, glad we, we, I'm glad we came across you there. Yeah, even though I did get us a bit lost in the woods, that's 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 on me. Hmm. Also, follow up question: How did you all find your way down here? Um. Uh, I just, you know. I'm I'm a little bit more in tuned with you know nature and uh, uh, got a bit of tracking skills. You know, me mum taught me how. Uh, tracked your <laughs> your large friend there's footprints. See, wasn't wasn't all that difficult. Uh, might have to uh, might have to work on on uh, you know concealing those in future. Yeah. Yes, Claude. I am. Um... Remember when I gave you that lesson on concealing your f footprints? You're supposed to kind of walk on your toes, wipe away what you can. Um, well, uh, it was, it was very muddy. I just thought that no one would notice. Uh, it's usually how people notice when it's more muddy. I mean, it's how I noticed. Did you teleport from the tree to the hatch? Uh, you, you, you caught on to that too? Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, You're all uh, I... investigators, aren't you? Well, uh... I mean, it's, it's a team effort, but I... It's mostly thanks to me, Mum. Yeah, you're 
your, your mum help find us? No, she just uh, taught me how to, you know, track, you know, hunt wild animals. Uh, I don't know about the magic parts, though. I guess that's just me. But, uh, yeah. Mum knows best. You know, I say I agree. My mother is a uh, pretty famed warrior. Although she lives uh, overseas. It's been a while since I've been home. Yeah, might, might want to, you know, check in every now and then. Well, not too many people go on to Resvoldus these days. Well, uh, if that's all, then uh, yes, I'll see to this gentleman being protected. Ah, splendid. Um, you have to say, kind of glad this all got resolved with, you know, without any major conflicts. Like, we we were just basically making our, our way to Felgrim, you see. We have a prior appointment with, with someone else there. Well, uh, safe travels to you. Hold a moment. Uh, he takes a closer look at York. He kind of squints. Do I recognize you from somewhere? Um, I don't think I've met you before. Unless you've ever, um, met my father, maybe? You look familiar. The tapestry. Wait. I, um, I shouldn't say too much here. I tell you what. When you all come back from your uh, visit to Felgrim, uh, come back and see me. I might want to have a chat with you. Do you know anything about shared dream prophecies? That's what I'd like to chat with you about. Interesting. Oh, boy. You all may hold more power than you may be aware. Not to alarm you. Power good or power dangerous? Yeah, a bit of both. I suppose it's how you choose to exercise it. That's fair. Blimey. But it was nice to meet you all. Even if I wasn't expecting it, I was actually taking a nap. We apologize uh, for having woken you from your nap. That's it's good to right. have more allies uh, on this. Well, it seems to be turning into some kind of quest or journey that we're on. So we're, we're glad to have made your acquaintance. Um, we'll definitely come and see you on our way back. Sounds good. Um... And here, just so you don't have to scramble around to find the entrance. If you put this ring on, it'll lead you back to it. And he holds out a silver ring. Just, you know, uh, don't lose it. You, I'd hate for someone else to happen upon it. Thank you. Of course. And, uh, next time we meet, we'll have proper introductions and what have you indeed yeah good uh good sort i cool godspeed and I guess it would best be off then all right i wonder if ghost horses wander off and munch things <laughs> well safe travels to you now we'll see you again soon indeed all right, you all head out. Did the horses wander off? <laughs> <laughs> so you all make your way back. I to munch that metal tree. And mm, the horses have been waiting. Nice. They have not moved from where you left them. I like these horses. horses. They're, They're good. good. Maybe good. 
them. That what? was interesting. Yeah, blimey. Uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to get used to hearing like people talk, you know, know an awful lot about what we're capable of and we're, we're not completely unaware. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to get used to any of this, really. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just a baker living with his mum. Currently not living with his mum, but in fact on the road, like a proper adventurer. Gosh, I, my mum's probably worried sick. I should probably write to her. Why don't you get her a sending stone and mail that to her so you can talk more readily? It's a splendid idea. Um, should we get going? Yes, we should. All right, you all go to head off. Back on the road. Yeah. Does it look like anyone followed us here? Uh, it does not. Except, well, make me a perception check just in case. Oh. So far, a little <laughs> higher than a <laughs> one and a two. <laughs> okay, that's more like it. Uh, dirty 20. You don't see any other footprints or anything, but you do have the odd feeling of being watched. Is there anything in the trees? Or a bird flying overhead? If you look around, you don't seem to see anyone. I have the strangest feeling that we're being watched. Well, that's uh, kind of just the oh. nature, of, nature of the forest for you. So, sorry, what was that, Robin? Uh, how so, Bon? I can't put my finger on it, but it's as if I had a decent dice roll in a game of chance <laughs> and became aware of this feeling. Mm -hmm. We have just gotten slightly involved in a sale of a ring to... or attempted sale to... Something called a someone who's called a god slayer, so probably best if we stay cautious. Definitely. Good point. Mm. Alright, so should we continue? Let's Yeah, let's hit the road. So you all climb back on your horses and you get ready to head back towards the main road. Uh, who's taking the lead here? Barney, are you still leading? I mean, I, I could probably roll another survival. I do, I am proficient, so hopefully my people will give us like a better chance this time. So, Barney, as you go to lead everyone back towards the main road, your horse stops as if hitting up against a, a wall, and you see something seemed to shimmer in front of you for a moment. Oh, okay. That's weird. You can, uh, everyone else noticed that. That is very strange. Should we do an arcana check on it? Uh, you may if you like. Mine isn't very good. I don't know if someone else wants I, to try. I can do. I've got a plus five to Arcana and I'm proficient. That's a uh, 15. This seems to be some kind of magical barrier. Right. Someone's put up a barrier here. Um, see if we can go into a different direction. Uh, hopefully we're not boxed in. Does anyone have Dispel Magic? <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. 
Nope. Uh, just to be sure, um, it, just to make sure I understood this, were, were we uh, on the still kind of following the path that we took uh, from following the bugbear and gotten back to that, or were we still on the way back? You're still on the way back. You, you're essentially just leaving uh, from having climbed out of the, the place and gotten your ah. horses. Perhaps we should go back in there and tell them about this. Unless they put that it up. Seems wise. You hear some leaves rustle nearby. And you can see standing at the base of a nearby tree is that of a tiefling woman. And she looks at all of you and smiles. Good, I have you right where I want you. That is who where we're going to call tonight's session. Oh. Uh, that's probably who was watching us. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Of course. That was fun. Cool, this is great. Right. Yeah. Wait, you it off. was fun. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, of course, I had, I had fun as well. So, let's see uh, here. Our next session. Stakes are definitely yeah. getting higher now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They yeah, certainly are. And, uh, yeah, just for scheduling ahead, um, the session after next would probably, would presumably be on the 31st, uh, for New Year's Eve. Would that be, uh, a f uh, so I'm personally not doing anything for New Year's Eve, but if people want New Year's Eve off, I completely understand. And we can Oh, we're not do doing anything either. <laughs> Yeah, we, we it's just there's just it's just chaos out here that night, so no, it's probably best to stay home and stay for the animals. Yeah, it's, so we tend to avoid New Year's Eve in general, like like party wise. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that, it's it's up to you. Uh, but is everyone at least good for the seventeenth? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I shall be free. All right, and uh, we can kind of assess the situation with New Year's Eve from there. I'm personally fine with it, but again, if anyone wants to spend their, their New Year's Eve doing whatever, uh, that is also perfectly fine. I completely understand. But yeah. All right, cool. Chat, yeah, thank you thanks, everyone. for joining us. And thank you guys for playing. Thank you for gaming. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Yeah, thank you for hosting. It's uh, as Curtis said, nap time for me before <laughs> I get fully later. Uh, <laughs> come back and see us tonight uh, because we'll be doing one shot here as well, and I'll actually be playing rather than DM. Oh boy! Excellent. Yeah. Uh, until then, chat. We'll see you next time.